and this is the first video of our new Linux internal course. Uh, but before that, please subscribe to my channel so that I can bring you more exciting content like this every day. So before diving in into Linux internals, in the first couple of videos, what I'm going to show you is I'll give you a little overview of Linux shell, uh, file descriptors and few basic commands which we'll be using throughout the course. So you would have a good idea of what these things are before we go into like uh, some really complicated stuff all right so i mean like some of you would be new to linux would be watching this for the first time so will not may not be familiar with all this stuff so this is for them if you feel that you're familiar with shell and basic command feel free to skip it all right so the first thing i'm going to tell you about is the shell it's a bone shell so shell is probably the most important part of the Unix system. And I'm saying Unix and not referring to Linux. I'll, I'll tell you that later. So it is basically the interface between the user space and the kernel space. So what is the user space? What is the kernel space? That is like the advanced concept, which we'll be talking about in uh, the later videos. But for now, you just understand that it is an abstraction layer between the user where the you, I mean, like user as in me or you who operate it uh, who operate the linux system and the kernel which is basically the linux linux or unix core it uh, it acts as an abstraction layer between these two uh, elements or two subsystems you can call it. so moving on so you use a shell to run all your commands and what kernel will do is basically change those commands into system calls to basically achieve the desired result. So even if you run a simple command like ls, so there are a bunch of system calls which happens in the background. So we'll, I'll show you that when we'll talk about uh, strace and system calls. So for now you just need to understand that it basically transform your uh, commands into system calls so that Linux can perform the action required right uh, so when you run a unix or a linux server uh, there are chances that you will not have access so why a shell is important is because uh, when you run it as a server and you would find it running as a server linux uh, is preferred for running servers and it can be any server a web server an email server anything like that the chances are that you wouldn't have access to gui but you would only get shell. So you should know how to perform all the stuff which you can do using GUI in the shell itself, in the CLI itself, a command line interface, which is called, all right? So you can consider it uh, like, uh, like MS-DOS in Windows. So if you must have worked with Windows system, so it's like MS-DOS in Windows. Uh, the default shell in Unix system is the bone shell. And you can find it, I think in, Let's do ls slash pin sh. No. So you can see the bin sh. This is the bone shell. But Linux replaced it with an advanced version of this uh, called the bone again shell, which is simply called bash. And what you see on my screen, this is basically the bash shell. And you can even list it like bin. bash so you can see so you what you see here this is the bash shell and this is not the sh if you want to go into the bone shell i would just run this and now you can see i'm in the bone shell but since we have an advanced version available to us we'll be using the bone again shell or the bash shell for all our videos so the system this which you see is a linux system it's a centos 7 system uh, i am running it on a virtual machine so if you want, you can use something like VirtualBox to run a virtual machine of CentOS 7, CentOS 6. So we'll be switching between CentOS 6 and CentOS 7. So yeah. Now let's talk about the cat command. So you would wonder why I'm talking about the cat command specifically here and not when we'll do some basic command video. Uh, that's because cat is actually a different, uh, I mean, a little different command and it gives you a good idea of the IO stream, how the IO stream works in Linux, right? So before moving on, let's just look at the man page for cat. And cat basically is a short form, form for concatenate and it basically concatenate files and print it on standard output. 
so this is basically and you can just go through the options i just wanted to show you what cat does so this is what exactly it does it reads an input stream and prints it on the output uh, standard output right so moving on let's exit out of this all right for those who don't know what man does man is basically giving you documentation for any specific command or anything you're looking for in linux if it's available so it gives you the documentation all right so in linux uh, the processes uses io stream to read or write data right an input stream like i said could be anything like a file or a device like pipe so we'll talk about pipes in later and it could be even shell so like i'll show you what i mean and same for goes for the uh, standard output so standard output can be your file you can i mean you can send an output to a file or a device or even to send your output to the shell right first read or print the file using cat command so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file with vi say my text i'll put some text in this hello world hello world it's very innovative and now what i'm going to do is cat and i'm going to get give it an input stream which is the file so my text and this is printing out so the standard output in this case is my shell because it is printing out to the shell right and the standard input is my text which is the file which i have given it but suppose what if i want to have an input i mean standard input as my shell so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the cat command without any argument so now if i say hello word you can see it returns it so in this case my input stream is my shell and the output stream is also shell right now we can just exit out of it with control d that's another way so i hope you're getting what inputs and output stream are you can also create files using cat uh, let's do that also so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file called say my file dot txt and i'm going to read it until the end of file now if i say hello world or let's say hello all right all right and give it an end of file so now let's just list our files so you can see my file dot txt is created and if i cat it can see hello tarik which is the text which we gave so in this case we created a file and this symbol which you see is basically i am redirecting all the inputs which will be coming from end of file to this file my.txt so this is basically a sort of hack and not exactly creating files if you want to create file you either use touch or vi or any other editor to create files all right so together standard output and standard input they are together called file descriptor so there's a third type of file descriptor as well called the standard error but we are not going to talk about it in this video because we have a separate section for standard error uh, it's actually a little different from the standard in standard out yes uh, if let me see if i have missed anything which i wanted to tell in this video probably not so i think this is it for this video guys hope you like the video hope you now have the understanding of what is shell and difference between born shell and born again shell not much difference uh, you can either use any of them i uh, you want to use born shell you can use born shell you can use bash you can use bash. there are many other shells which are available the z shell the k shell k shell and many other shells which are available with different flavors of linux since i'm using centos bash bash is basically the default with centos 7 yeah So yeah before you go please subscribe to the channel and some really exciting stuff is coming in this series so do watch out for this all right ciao thank you for watching